Hello, my name is Pavan. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another vlog. I have not made a vlog in a long time that just focuses on me watching movies at home and vlogging it. And that's exactly what today's video is. I look like a pancake. I know I washed my hair and I just don't want to put any product in it because I'm relaxing today. I'm taking it easy and I'm making a video where I'm going to be watching some good movies and I'm excited to watch some movies but before we do that i want to recap on everything that i have watched in may it's not going to be a proper review of every single movie it's going to be like a really quick super quick recap of everything that i've watched that i'm just going to share with you so let's go to letterboxd and yes let's go <laughs> okay so here is my diary of everything that i watched in may i don't even remember everything that i watched and i feel like i've spoken about some of these movies in a previous video so i'm gonna try to do this fairly quick so crimes of the future was merely fine as i said in a previous video i was just not in the mood for the movie and Caroline was, um, yes, it was anxiety inducing, it was almost as bad as Shiva Baby, which made me feel, <laughs> then I watched The Dirties, which was kind of like, ah, it, it was fine, I think I wanted a little bit more, and I just, um, it just, something did not work for me in this movie, especially towards the end, I, I liked the idea of the movie, I like kind of like the self-awareness, blah, 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 I enjoyed that, but everything else I was kind of like, mm, it's, it's fine, then I watched Woody Wonk and the Chocolate Factory, the very, the, the, the OG, and I enjoyed it. I feel like I've watched this one when I was a child, but I didn't even log this as a rewatch because it's been a long time since I watched it. And it was just fun. It was sweet. I watched it when it was like really late and it was like a weekend. It was like the absolute perfect time to watch this. Then I watched Talking Heads. I absolutely love this. I have absolutely nothing to really say about it aside from my um, little review here, which said, I really love this. Um, I finished reading A Man's Search for Meaning today and watch and watching this felt like the perfect company to the book about life and how we navigate it. Uh, yeah, sorry. My camera decided to just die there but basically what I was saying is um, it was just interesting to watch how people navigate life and how our opinions on life change and how we're really kind of similar even though we're very different at the same time I have no idea if that made sense but I absolutely loved it. then I watched Abigail I did not realize that this was uh, filmed in Ireland and going into this the the build-up the secrecy of what the horror is I was loving it and then once the horror revealed itself I was like hey this is not for me and uh, it, well it was not for me and I um, did not enjoy it then I watched Mad Max Fury Road for the first time and I honestly have nothing new to add to this movie probably because it was absolutely not beautiful and I cannot wait to watch the new uh, Mad Max. What else is there to say? Then I watched the French movie Infested. I loved a lot of things about this. I said in my review here that it was absolutely incredible. I love the horror, the pace, the performances, and the suspense. The main thing I actually really want from this movie is that it does not turn into a stupid English remake because a movie I really loved called Speak No Evil is actually, this is happening with that movie and I do not do not like it. And um, yes, Infested was anxiety, anxiety inducing and I absolutely loved it. Then I watched Baby Reindeer. Um, I can imagine that this was extremely cathartic for the director. Something worked some things did not work for me I don't really watch a lot of TV shows but um, yeah it was fine then evil does not exist the ending confused me I had to sit about it so sort of, I have to sit on it for a little while and um, yeah it, it, it was it was a very good movie just the ending confused me for a little while until I figured it out and I was like oh okay yeah 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 I evil does not exist in nature but it does exist in humans and then maybe he changes into an animal Ooh, okay, I'm not gonna say anything about you know but anyway then I watched blind and in every single way this is my type of movie. Basically, it is about a person who recently lost her sight and she retreats to the safety of her home, a place where she can feel in control alone with her husband and her thoughts. And we kind of just follow her and the scenarios that she creates to cope with um, life and how she navigates those circumstances and how she um, kind of spirals within those uh, thoughts that she creates. I absolutely loved it. And now talking about something I absolutely hated, the coffee table. Oh my good God. If you want to pause and read my huge review here, go for it but every i have not rated a movie this low in a really long time i went into this thinking oh my god everybody's saying this is the most disgusting movie they've ever watched and it is disgusting don't get me wrong but nothing else about this movie works whenever somebody has an idea for a movie and they're like oh that's actually really disgusting okay and they uh, try execute it and they're only like the only substance of the movie is the fact that there's just one disgusting thing that happens and everything else does not work that is exactly what the what it felt like with the coffee table then i watched walking and talking which i loved then i watched chime this literally um i, I don't really know what happened but uh, this is the director of uh, Cure, is that what it's called? Yeah, Cure. Um, this generally uh, kept me up all night. Not all night, for like an hour, because I couldn't sleep. It was terrifying. Then I watched Burning. I absolutely love this. I love that we have the same mentality as uh, Jung So. And I love the way I just, you know, I'm not going to spoil it. Just go watch it. Then I watched Good Luck to You, Leo Grant, which was great. 
uh, the message of this movie was incredible. Um, I watched Safe, I watched Rain Man, and then I watched Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I rewatched it because I've been rewatching all the Harry Potter movies, and that one was uh, good. It wasn't my favorite so far, I don't think, but I enjoyed it. The movie that I have picked out for today, well, actually, for right now, is called The Innocence. It's a Norwegian movie, and the description is During the bright Nordic summer, a group of children reveal their dark and mysterious powers when the adults aren't looking. Let's go watch The Innocence. Okay, I have put a hat on because I still have not sorted my hair, but then I realized like this cap is a little bit crooked, but whatever. I have watched The Innocence and I'm gonna get straight into it. It was not as good as Blind because it's directed by the same director. Um, the director's name is, are you ready for this awful pronunciation, Eskil Vogt. So this movie is about four kids and some of them have developed powers, not like over the top superpowers like in Chronicle, things like mind control, reading other people's minds, uh, communicating with other people, things like that basically. And this movie was great for so many reasons. The first thing I liked was that it was not like over the top, like I said, like Chronicle. It was like, because in theory I was like, okay, this is like a fantastical supernatural type of movie. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to watch a movie with kids like fucking flying around like Superman and that's just going to be the entire movie. It was not like that. It was subtle. There was so many reasons behind everything that every single child did. And like saying that every single child was incredible. Their performances held the movie so tight for two hours. I was watching this and I was like, how are they like six or seven years old and are performing so well? I could not, I was like so impressed. And I believe this movie showcases childhood in such great detail. Like it shows us how easily we make friends when we're kids like we don't have those barriers and it showcases the things that we do when we're bored as children but it also showcases one kid called Ben that I have oh my god I have never hated a kid so much in my life and you're probably like hey is it really really that bad yes it is that bad this kid Ben right he finds a cat that belongs to one of the four kids yeah and guess what he does let, let me paint you a little picture I'll not tell you exactly what he does but let me paint you a little picture okay so he gets this cat and he uh with his friend they go up um an apartment building and they're at the stairs and he holds a cat and he does something mm -hmm. yes and then guess what the cat is not fully mm -hmm. so he gets his foot and to the cat do i don't really need to say what i need to say but i hate this kid but you're meant to hate this kid because throughout the entire movie you watch him grow and develop his powers and abilities and use them for being just not a nice person and then the other kids are trying to stop him and it is so great because it feels like it's not just like a superhero movie it's not a superhero movie it, i feel like this movie could literally be like this massive metaphor for like growing up for puberty the things that you discover about yourself and how we progress and what we do with the the powers that we get and with the characteristics we develop and it was so so great the dynamics the tensions i really really like this director and i googled it and um, they only have two movies and i've watched two the movies blind and the innocence i really enjoyed this movie and i feel like that's everything i have to say about this movie i don't have like many notes i just wanted to just say it I, like i have not reviewed a movie or made like a video where i have no script for a little while i really enjoy the innocence i'm gonna go fix my hair and watch a short horror movie because i don't even know if i have time to watch like a full feature uh movie um today because i just don't have time but i'm gonna continue this vlog tomorrow as well so i'm gonna watch i live in your house it's a 15 minute short movie and then we'll see what we're gonna do so let's get on to it okay hello i tried to fix my hair i don't even know if it made a difference i do not think it did but i just watched i live in your house and it was a super simple concept that i feel like would work extremely well as a full-length feature movie the concept of this movie is super simple we have a woman who is working on her balcony and her new neighbor because she just moved into the house her new neighbor is like hey hello I am your new neighbor and I live in your house and she's like what, what what do you mean are you making a joke or what and he's like no 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 I literally live in your house and she goes to bed and she's freaking out because she's like is this like weird neighbor living in my house and she doesn't know when the story progresses and he's like well how would you know if I live in your house because I've could have been living here for many years and if I have been living here for many years then I'd be a pro at it and you would never be able to detect me and if I do live in your house and I'm not in your way then why does it matter that I live in your house and she's like trying to be like it's it's just weird that you live in my house apparently that i don't even know do you live in my house do you not live in my house and yeah that's basically what the short movie is about it's very very interesting i really like it and if you had a really good director like imagine how good that would be 
as a full-end feature. I love kind of like clever little shorts like that that kind of just get the job done really uh, quick, but I don't have time for another full-length uh, movie today, so I'm going to continue the vlog tomorrow. I might vlog a little bit more today. I don't know. I will keep you updated, but yes. <laughs> so I have finished watching my movies for the day, but I have not finished talking about a few books in the few, in a few vlogs ago. I have no idea if that made sense. A few vlogs ago, I spoke about a few books that I have been reading. Well, today I'm not going to be talking about what I have been reading. I'm going to be telling you about what I have picked up recently. And I have a good few books that I have picked up recently. Here's the stack. Let me, sh let me show you the, the stack of books. Yeah. It, they're there. So so basically, I'll quickly walk you through what I have recently picked up and how much these things cost me. So late Victorian Gothic Tales cost me one pound or one euro, whatever you want to call it. It was super, super cheap. And I'll read this around Halloween time because why not? We all love a few Gothic um, tales. I remember I read uh, Carmilla. I think that's what it's called, Carmilla. And I absolutely loved it. So I thought I would pick it up. And here we have um, an anthology of women's writing erotica. I have no idea why I picked this up, but the authors that were mentioned in this were incredible. And I was like, hey, you know, we have some uh, Austin, we have some Athwood, um, and some Bronte sisters, and I'm just excited to read it. And it was literally one euro or one pound as well, I believe. I picked that up, this up, alongside the Gothic Tales. And yeah, why not? It's a big book. It was very, very cheap. Why not? That's added to the library. I'm trying to trying to get a big collection of books, but also at the same time have no space for books because that's kind of where I'm at and this won't focus. Can you focus? Okay, cool, we're back in focus. Next, I picked up a beautiful brand new copy 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 of poor things i absolutely adored the movie and i heard that this book is bonkers and look, look, that just looks really cool and I, i've just heard great things about this book like look how beautiful this is oh my god this i'm just excited i've heard it's bonkers i've heard it's nuts the cover is beautiful i picked this up brand new in waterstones well my partner actually bought it for me and it costs like 12 pounds or something along those lines and the quality of the cover like you can't really see it in the video but it's not even that great so if you're paying a full price um come on get get your quality a little bit better especially for like such a popular book i just love the purple i love the fall yeah, i'm just i'm just excited to read this i am worried though because i feel like it will be quite difficult to read but i don't care i am excited for it on to the next book we have roddy doyle paddy clark ha 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 we have a few roddy doyle books in this house but this is the winner of the booker prize it's meant to be like his biggest most acclaimed piece of work and i'm just excited to read it um i picked that up in a charity shop for one euro slash one pound and then we have ishiguro's never let me go i really liked where is it where is it there we go clara and the sun you can't even see it over there but i really enjoyed that book and i saw this in the charity shop guess for how much one pound one euro and um I, I was like why would i not pick this up that's kind of what i do in the charity shop i see like an author i know and i'm like hey i, I want to pick up this book then some mystery mystery a mystery murder mystery book it's kind of like in the same vein of um blah, 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 where? you know these books this one like the last person you, you know these books it's kind of like the same sort of thing. I got it from a partner because I thought that she would enjoy reading it. It's a mystery book. Guess how much it cost? 50p. Not even a pound. It was in like a, a shop. Um, well, yes. It was kind of like in a charity section of a, a Tesco a supermarket. And I was like, yeah, I'll pick this up. Why not? I'll be, I'll be kind. Then we have some Chekhov plays. Um, literally nothing to say here. It's a beautiful copy in great condition. I did not expect the font to be so big. I'll show you now. The font is like relatively big. Usually in the like older books, the font sucks, but this did not suck. It was like five pounds because I got it in like a, a bookshop or five, six euro or something along those lines. And I cannot wait to read it. I buy all these books. Do I read all these books? No, I do not because currently I am reading Claire Keegan's Antarctica. It's a, an anthology of short stories. And uh, Claire Keegan is a contemporary Irish author and she writes very Irishy. Great use of English there and it just I, I don't know I just really like Claire Keegan if you are looking for a, a good I Irish 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 author to read and Claire Keegan might be the person that you should go to I said I wasn't going to talk about what I'm currently reading but that's all I'm going to say then I bought this brick John Steinbeck's East of Eden beautiful beautiful edition look at this oh that is gorgeous guess how much it cost yes 
one pound one euro so cheap i cannot believe like i've literally spent well I, aside from the new books i've basically spent like a tenner then the last thing i bought which was yesterday i believe i got this uh why we sleep it was two pounds and i've heard great things about this book it's about why why we sleep i probably should listen to this as an audiobook rather than a physical because it would be like a great like podcast but I get too tempted by spending money that I definitely need to save. Um, so yeah, here, this is what I bought. And bonus, a little bonus for you. I got this beautiful old ass photo album. Look at this, I need to sneeze, wait. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I sneezed. Beautiful album, look at that, oh, it's gorgeous. And then I got one more beautiful photo album because I want to print lots of lots of photos. I have 67,000 photos on my phone and I really need to get my ass in gear and update them. But look at this, look at this, I'm sure. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. I need to sneeze again, so I'm gonna shut up and let's get on to either the next movie or whatever else we're doing. I feel like I'm gonna pick up the vlog tomorrow, so see you then. <laughs> hello, 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 it is the next day and I have watched another movie. I watched Next Door, directed by, okay, let's try this, Pal Setal. Listen, I'm just going to put the name up on the screen. It is directed by Pal Satown. I have no idea how I say this name. It is another Norwegian movie. I feel like there's a bit of a streak. There is a bit of a streak in this video. We're watching Norwegian movies, and this movie I came across accidentally. I was scrolling through Netflix, and I was flicking through, like, the hidden gems section. So I saw the trailer, and I was like, hmm, okay, let's watch this, because it looks kind of interesting. It's fairly short. It's 75 minutes long. And if you know me, then I like my shorter movies. And this was a surprise. It was a hidden gem in every way. It is a very very solid psychological thriller i had a really good time with and now i'm going to tell you what this movie is about john has been left by his partner and his life seems meaningless until one day he meets his two neighbors Anne and kim and is drawn into a mysterious and dangerous game where the truth and lies live side by side i feel like that description does not justify how solid this movie is it's basically about a guy and he meets two neighbors and he goes into their house and they're like hey can you move this little thing for us and guess what there's a lot more than just moving Moving um, this little thing, this wardrobe thing, imagery that they ask him to move, and it goes into various realities. This movie jumps between real and not real, and we're figuring out slowly who this character is, what has he done, what's happening, why is he possibly imagining things, or are these things true? I don't really want to tell you, and I'm being a little bit vague because I really think that this is a good movie, and I feel like if I give anything away, it's just going to spoil it. I really enjoyed the early 2000s feeling that it gave me watching this, and seeing the cover for this movie, I was like, damn, it is so ugly, and I absolutely love it. And there's so many interesting things about this movie. For example, whenever he goes into uh, his neighbor's apartment, the apartment just goes on forever and ever, and every little corner in the apartment changes, and there's like a million and one rooms, and you're like, how is this like a real place? How is this apartment so big? It felt all over the place, but at the end, it does make sense. And that was like one little maybe small issue that I had with this movie. I feel like this movie just gave us all the answers at the very, very end. And sometimes I like uh, leaving a movie and being like, hmm, I wonder what that meant. But this movie does answer majority of the things for you. But do not fear, this movie is still absolutely incredible and I would really, really recommend you to go check it out. I have never heard of this movie and it is... I've never heard of anybody even talking about it, so definitely go check it out. It is called Next Door from 2005 and you should go watch that movie it is great <laughs> and i also really like the fact that you have all these expectations because you see these neighbors and you're like okay they're gonna lure him in and something is just like they're gonna get killed he's gonna get killed something blah 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 you have these expectations but i feel like this movie really uh goes against expectations that you would have for a typical movie like this which i really 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 loved so on to the next movie or whatever we're gonna get up to the reason i'm actually making a vlog is i f I, f I forgot to tell you yesterday it is because i got a new job which means um with an in, in, in few weeks i'm going to be starting it and that means i won't have time to do something like this for i don't know how long to sit down all day and just watch movies because this is going to be a new job and i don't know what my time is going to be like so that's sad and i really wanted to make a vlog where i just watch movies and do what i really 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 love and that's what i'm going to be doing what i really love <laughs> hello i have stepped away from my norwegian movies by watching a space movie and leading up to this i have had these like ignorant thoughts whenever it has come to movies set in space i just had a really bad impression of them i don't know why i just was never drawn to them maybe i just watched some stuff when i was a kid and i hated them but over the past year i've been trying to push myself out of my comfort zone by watching more of these movies for example i watched gravity a few months ago and i really 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 enjoyed that but now i watched ad astra directed by james gray and i 
really, 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 really love this. I don't know why I watched this. I just kind of saw it on Letterboxd and I was like, hmm, okay, let's watch this. And I was not disappointed. It like genuinely exceeded my expectations by so much. It's definitely something completely different for me. It's something that I very, very seldom watch, but I really, really, really enjoyed it. So what is Ad Astra about? It is about an astronaut called Roy McBride who undertakes a dangerous mission across the solar system to uncover the truth about his missing father and a series of strange power surges. And the first thing I have to say, Brad Pitt in this movie is absolutely incredible. Whenever I started, I was not sure about this because I kind of felt like the writing was very generic. He was just like, I miss my dad and life is so hard. Just like very basic, uh, direct dialogue. But as the movie progresses and we get into the tight emotional storyline that had such a weight to it, there was so much emotion in this and there was so much meaning behind all the exploration and everything happening within the movie that I was so drawn into it. And as the movie progresses, we understand our character, Roy, and how uh, difficult he's finding in life, how he finds everything to be absolutely meaningless. And it's also interesting because maybe we could use like him going out of space to get a different perspective on life as this like big metaphor, which I really, really, really enjoyed. And just seeing him progress and his thoughts progress as he seeks out his father and seeing what happens throughout the story, I just found it so enjoyable and so interesting to watch. And I don't think I've ever watched a movie where they've went further than the moon. Um, so they go to Mars here and Neptune and I was just like, oh my god, is, have I been just missing out on this my entire life because it was incredible. Oh, oh, and oh my gosh, the visuals in this movie, oh my god, they were so, so, so beautiful. And I was just so blown away by so many shots and so many scenes in this and just everything combined with the performances the visuals, just the acting, the storyline, the weight of the storyline, I was just so sucked in. And the fact that it was so out of my comfort zone and I rated it four and a half stars out of five shows that this was just such a solid movie that I really engaged with. And I was watching this and I was just like, oh my God, what is gonna happen? And I was getting anxious because you know, whenever something is set um, in space, I get quite anxious watching it. And I'm like this, what, sitting down watching, uh, like freaking out and uh, that was happening to me, but not as much as gravity because gravity really freaked me out. But this wasn't really like focusing on the exploration of space it was more so it was kind of like a balance of the exploration of space and maybe his relationship with his father and maybe um, his ex-wife etc etc and personal discovery as well which I really I just found it so interesting that it just wasn't like oh look at these big planets look how cool they can look on tv but it was more so hey, it actually had some emotion to it. I found it really interesting because in my head, I never associated this sort of like genre with emotion and personal exploration so much. And it this worked. This worked so much for me and I had such a great time with it. So I definitely, if you've probably watched it because it's a very popular movie, um, Ad Astra. Great, great movie. <laughs> okay, hello, I have finished watching the last thing for this vlog. My eyes are getting sore and like really tired from watching movies, but I wish I could watch more, but I do not have time today so we're gonna wrap it up with sean baker's snow bird um if you don't know anything about sean baker he's an incredible director and he literally just won the palme d'or uh, a few days ago for his new movie and nora and this short movie is about theo who lives in california in a squatter settlement called slab city and she bakes a cake and she walks around with the cake talking to people of that community i know that sean baker used a lot of uh, people who were not actors for this short and it's kind of like half documentary half proper short film if that makes sense and um i really love sean baker for many reasons the biggest reason is he always makes these people that he showcases feel like actual humans and not something that's being explored and exploited and i feel like that's done uh, quite a lot throughout media we see somebody that's marginalized or somebody that's seen as quote unquote different and we need to explore them or understand where they've come from or why they're in this situation but sean baker takes a more humanistic storytelling approach that's extremely respectful and and he just showcases how to properly uh, capture stories and he does so in an extremely powerful way and i absolutely love it it's just admirable in every single way. Although I don't have much to say about this short per se, it's very nice to see um, a marginalized community being shown in a short movie, but done in an extremely uh, respectful way and an authentic way. And that's just the beauty of Sean Baker. And um, he's a great director and that was a great short and all of the movies that I watched in this video were great I hope you enjoyed this vlog. It's definitely gonna be really really long But I explained why I'm making this and why it's uh, Important I suppose because I'm not gonna get to do this for a little while 
I think that's everything I have to say. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>